Should I use a showing agent to help me in my real estate business? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Rosemary Lewis, your real estate bestie, and today we are going to answer the question, should I use a showing agent in my real estate business? Now, before we get into it, go ahead, wherever you are enjoying this episode, go ahead and subscribe so that every time we post a podcast or a video, you will be the first to know all about it, especially when we talk about topics like today. So I have heard this one, and honestly, this is something that I too struggled with. Should I have a showing agent assist me in my business? I think back to when my business was really starting to take off. And quite honestly, this is when the multiple offers were happening, homes were flying off so, so fast, and it was truly impossible for me to both be two places at once and actually have a life that wasn't all real estate. But like many of you, I was hesitant to, number one, ask for help. Even though I knew it would provide me leverage, I worried how my clients would receive Um, me not being the one to actually show the properties. But I actually had a mindset shift. And what I figured out is that it all comes down to the expectation, okay? What do we set up as expectations and also understanding our client's expectation and it will help you answer this question. And this question on whether or not you should have a showing agent, I truly believe it's going to be different for every person, but let me tell you how I approached it. So first things first is that I personally, um, when I did hire a showing agent, I hired somebody that I was in rapport with, somebody that I I was in relationship with. It was a newer agent who I actually met her on Instagram and, and she now is on my real estate team, but I met her on Instagram And I knew, number one, that her showing would be would provide me with just some more flexibility because, like I said, I couldn't be everywhere all at once. But number two, I also knew that this would actually be a win for her because it would give her some training and it would give her some some experience in working with clients. Okay, but I had to set up the expectation with her. So the expectation first was set with that agent where I had to let her know, first of all, these are my clients. <laughs> and because these are my clients, you know, there are definitely um, some standards that they are used to from working with me. And I needed to make sure that she and I were on the same page. So everything from timeliness to the way that you show up to showings to the conversations that you have, making sure that she understood how I work so that it wouldn't be an abrupt change when she was opening doors for me, okay? And I will say that you have to be a little careful here because some people are overzealous and overeager and pretty much you gotta stay in your lane, right? So I had to work with somebody who knew that I was the lead agent. You don't need to be talking to them about, you know, how much they should offer or any of the details revert those questions back to me. And I was also very much, um, present and available to have conversations with them while they were out showing. Okay. Then the next thing is that I set up the realistic expectation with my clients from the very beginning. So when we were in the buyer's consultation, I let them know, Hey, there are going to be a lot of times that I am going to be the one showing, but I actually have a showing partner who works with me. And the reason that I have decided to have a showing agent is because what I figured out is that in order to best serve you, it would be best if I was able to duplicate myself, right? I never want you to miss out or I never want you to only be dependent on my schedule, but I am, you know, I've actually invested in getting the right person to help us just to make sure that we are always able to to accommodate and help you and make sure that we are showing the homes. So by having that conversation up front. My clients never, ever, ever felt like they were pawned. And also when they were actually at, or when they are actually in the active process of purchasing, 
I'm still the one that, that they're in contact with, right? I'm still the one who is letting them know, hey, this is what the show and schedule will be. You're going to meet her at this time. You're going to see these couple of homes. I'm the one giving them feedback. I'm letting them know that I'm the one having the conversation with the listing agent. So it's not like, okay, here, this person is going to help you and I am completely hands off. And this is one thing that I do want to distinct, okay, especially when I was an individual agent. A showing agent is different than a buyer's agent, right? Now that I'm on a team and I have a team, my buyer's agents, they fully take care of the client from start to finish. When you're talking about a showing agent, to me, that means somebody who you are probably an individual agent and you just need to create leverage. So literally, this person is just the person who's opening doors, who's giving you feedback, who's letting you know how the showings went so that you can then go and write the contract. So there is there will probably be times where you are still showing, but you know, you present it like, hey, we both are here to support you. And I'm gonna tell you what having a showing agent did for me, especially when I was an individual agent. I can definitely think of times that I was at a listing appointment, taking a listing while my showing agent was showing a home that my client absolutely loved and I was able to get it under contract. So what it allowed me to do was to duplicate myself. But again, it was setting up those standards from the very beginning with myself, with the clients and with the actual showing agent that made that successful. And I get it. I understand that everyone is not at a place where you are comfortable with letting go some of that control. But here is what I'm going to let you know is that as your business grows, right, it's really tough to be a one person show. You are going to likely need to um, bring in other people, whether that be a transaction coordinator, a listing coordinator, a showing agent to help you get everything done, because otherwise you will probably run yourself ragged and reach burnout. So maybe you're not ready to have a showing coordinator right now or a showing assistant right now, but maybe for you leverage looks like a transaction coordinator or a listing coordinator um, so that you could take some of the paperwork off so that you can focus on the client. But whatever you decide, remember this is your business. You can do it however you want to do it, but don't be afraid to, to make those adjustments to provide you leverage because I promise you it's probably going to make you a better not only person, but definitely a better agent. Now, if you made it to the end of this episode and you, friend, are not subscribed to Real Estate Bestie, well, that's okay, I forgive you, but I'm gonna invite you to subscribe right now and hit that share button. I want you to share this episode with every real estate agent you know and share the rest of the podcast and YouTube videos with them because I know that this will help them in their business as I hope it is helping you. See you next week.